They're the liberal rednecks. They like cornbread, but sex they care way too much, but don't give a fuck. They're the liberal rednecks that makes some people upset, but they got three big old dicks that you can suck. Well, here we are. Uh, today, as we record this, is May 3rd. Uh, when it comes out, it will be May 5th, won't it? Oh, it will be, yeah. So sandwiched in between there. Did you think you know you, you know that I didn't even Yeah, you know I didn't even do that because of that. What? I, the background? Yeah. I swear what? to God, I just wanted to change my background up and I was like, oh, I like Star Wars. I'll just put Star Wars up. Now, granted, it's been on my mind because of May the Fourth. Okay, all right. Yeah. But like that wasn't like a clever well, little I mean, that's a hell of a kawanky dank. But yeah, but again, um, like I mean I have been thinking about it because of May the 4th. And also I just got through watching Captain uh, uh, or Winter Soldier and Falcon. Like all that type of shit is just very much at the front of my cerebellum right now. Mm -hmm. uh, what'd you think about Falcon and Winter Soldier? I really liked it. Uh, teaser. We're going to be, that will be the entire episode of my uh, other podcast through the screen door this week which will have actually come out yesterday if you're listening to this right now uh we're gonna do a re kind of a recap of the entire series i fucking i liked it i liked it a lot so I'm trying to think of whether I, but hell whatever i'll just say it i always it came out on fridays every friday yeah. night is when i would watch it with my family right every friday night i would be coming from uh-huh <laughs> yeah doing a thing with you yeah in which it was drunk it was drunk <laughs> yeah, and so yeah i'm sure that i'm sure that is why but i kind of had trouble like following it a lot like i would i would get i thought the action was rad i mean i also really liked it but there were multiple points and again i'm sure this is my fault because it was drunk but there were multiple points where i would be sort of like wait a minute hold on what how did what like i would be confused about exactly what they were trying to do or how they got there or whatever i'm actually glad to hear you say that and it should be pointed out that for me it too was drunk <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. because yeah. often at least the first couple episodes like because of that i ended up watching the episodes earlier in the day before the thing with me and you where it was drunk yeah. but but i literally had to watch the first two episodes completely over again and i swear to god i was like oh shit that's wyatt russell <laughs> like, right. like yeah. that's that's the level of drunk not paying because like it's not like that was hidden like it's very clear like holy shit there's wyatt russell he's gonna be the new you know ostensibly the new captain america in in this show at least for a second and like i fucking 100 missed that the first time so no i i agree with you but like dude the thing with marvel is is like i guess again like you're one of the most like i've got add so that happens to me all the time but you really you're a really good you're a focused person you got a big ass brain i just think that's a marvel thing and you just have to it kind of accept it when you watch marvel that like look if I missed one tiny part of this movie from five movies ago, it's very possible that what just happened there went smooth the fuck over my head. Right. Yeah. I, that's the thing. It's like, and it's not, it's not typically drunk for me when I watch right. things. So that's probably, I'm sure it's that and not the thing itself, but yeah, this is not, like you said, you have ADD. That is not typically a problem that I have. Like, right. Cause also like I, anything I watch with my kids are all, they're always like, well, who's What's that? that or whatever. Right. And I got to, and I always, and Katie too, I'm sure that is. And Katie too, Lord God. Yeah. Katie, especially, but she didn't watch that with us. Luckily. Does Katie uh, do the thing where she does that? Even if it's a thing that she doesn't yes. give a fuck about or, or it, even if it's like not possible to know the answer to the question right. she's like asking. Like the movie just yet. started. It just started. Yeah, exactly. And she'll be like, wait, who's this guy or whatever? It's like, we're, we are not supposed to know who yeah. that is. He literally just showed up. Clearly, yeah. it's going to be relevant and important who that guy is. Yeah. But obviously, no one, including the protagonist, knows right now who that is. And that includes me, Katie. I also don't know who that is. 
So why are you asking me? She, she asks questions like that all the time. She, and so like, I've, I just ignore those. Mm. If she asks a question that it's like, clearly there's no way I can know the answer to, I just ignore it. And then she'll be like, why are you know, why are you ignoring me for like, at, you know, so I thought that was a rhetorical question because how could you possibly expect me to actually have an answer for it? You know, she's fun to watch stuff with. By the way, yeah, Amber's <laughs> the exact same way. And I have a theory that they do it on purpose. Okay. Like, because, like, because, dude, we all know that, like, you know, haha, we want to play 90s Ray Romano comic, but like, all women are not the same. We know mm -hmm. that everyone is an individual snowflake, thumbprint, if it will. Um, yeah, they all do seem to have that one specific thing and like all of them have that one specific thing in common. And I think that like at the coalition years ago, they were just like, hey, we found in our research that nothing, and I mean nothing, pisses a man off more than when you do this. And they were all just like, awesome, got it. Because yeah. like it's, dude, when I've heard you describe it to Katie, I'm like, we, to the, to the number, that exact same, same thing happened last night. And cause I do, I have things like that, that I do that, like, I'm completely doing it on purpose. Cause I know it gets on Amber's nerves, like stuff that I wear, I'll find out that something don't hit for her. And I'll be like, I'm gonna go by seven of them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, granted, she might be on to me, but like, I don't think they care it at all to know any of that stuff. I just think that deservedly, like we, we do so many dumb man things throughout the day that we don't even conceive as dumb man things that piss them off and put a lot on them. And then, you know, on top of they've got ovaries that are, compl that are constantly being, uh, have jurisdiction put on them. And, you know, they've, uh, they make less money. I think that it's just kind of one of them, get it where you can get it in. That's one of their things. I just, I also just think it hits for them. It does hit for that. Yeah, it, it hits yeah, for yeah, them to do. It, yesterday. Right. Yesterday, Katie was talking to her best friend. Now, her her best friend, uh, because this is also how women be. Her best friend is my best friend's wife. Yeah. Who is it? Who is it that's got that bit? Is that a Joe Rogan bit? Somebody's got a bit about about how dudes don't ever do that. Where it's yeah, like right. you know, like your your old ladies, her friends their husbands or boyfriends yeah. you're like you don't fuck with those guys and i think it is <laughs> joe rogan guys i think you it, want nothing to do with those guys you're like but your best friends their girl their women becomes you know tight with your women and in my experience i mean again thompson's wife autumn is literally katie's best friend on earth so we could circle back to that but real quick yesterday she was talking to autumn on the phone as they are wont to do and i guess autumn was talking about how thompson don't hit and katie, <laughs> as she is want as to she do. is want to do and katie <laughs> katie, was, they were, katie was outside in the yard talking to her i was inside on the couch watching my cakes right doing nothing saying nothing to nobody not hurting a soul and i guess all them talking about how thompson don't hit my katie go you know what you know what Trey don't Trey hit. Don't hit neither. <laughs> and she literally just walked in the house and just started fucking talking trash about me to autumn but in front like standing yeah. in front of me looking at me but yeah. talking to autumn about how i don't hit yeah like she came inside to make sure that i heard all the things she was saying to autumn about how much i don't hit for her or whatever just straight up out of the blue um you should so, shut yeah. her goddamn cell phone off see what happens <laughs> <laughs> but yeah yeah no that's that's that joe Ro if it i think it is a joe rogan bit but that's like that's so fucking true and i also think like that's that's another way in which women are better than us because they're like look i'll make it work because yeah. that's how but like dude amber has some friends and she's like and, and this is, again, hey, by the way, everyone out there listening, please understand, I'm not trying to justify myself. This is a shit thing to do. I'll do it again, though. Uh, it's where she'll just be like, hey, insert girl she's friends with whose husband don't hit for me here. Yeah. <laughs> was wanting to know if we'd go out to eat Friday night. And I'll be like, no. And she'll be like, oh, do you have something else to do? And I'll be like, anything else. Yeah, yeah. anything else. <laughs> yeah. I'm not doing that. Like, yeah. like he just don't like, hit for me. <laughs> and, and he's not a bad guy, but it's just like, my yeah. thing is like, like sweetie we have a finite time on this earth to exist i'm not taking two and a half hours out of that to be miserable there's so many times that i'm forced to be miserable i'm not going to choose it you know what i'm saying yeah. i'm miserable in some sense like like you know nobody wants to clean out the gutter but god damn it you got to do it i'll be miserable then i'm not going to be miserable on friday 
just because just fucking y'all go and by the way she will sometimes just i heard them, i know i by the way i'm hearing it i'm saying it i'm terrible i get it but i get it is <laughs> that's picturing that at like the, yeah. just the apparent the apparent nature of how much they don't hit for you is is really cracking me well, up like from their perspective like where's Corey at like i ah, just and i'm sure amber don't do you no favors either he's like ah, he's just being a fucking queer at the house or no whatever. no she does do me favor no she does do me favors because it, to defend myself a little bit there i'm one of those people and we have one of those jobs in entertainment to where like i can always fill my hours with something useful and i do like i'm, right. I'm a I, like i'm a very busy guy but I think what, what a lot of people don't know is like a lot of that business, like I put that on myself. It's not like I always have a deadline. It's just like, to me, if I've got a couple idle hours, um, I could always be working on a video, working on a, a script or, or doing something. And so like, I will be like, no, I'm going to, I'll do that. Like, cause, and she can't Amber and a lot of our other friends don't understand, like, cause they don't, and this is normal. They don't like work. I like my, I, I like what I do, which is why they don't consider it work because, I, you know, work is something yeah, that you well, don't like. I was like. about to ask if there was an element of this too. This is, I remember one, being at my in-laws house and I was working on a script, uh, like a real fucking script that I was getting paid to write right. that of course never got fucking made or whatever, like none of them. Yeah. Do, I'm but. clearly talking about spec stuff that I just do so that I don't have to go to the dinner. Yeah, but you still got to write spec scripts, though. Right. Like it's still you get you have to do that if you're. I mean, if you give a fuck about working in TV or whatever, right. then You have to do that. Uh, so I was working on a, a real life script. Uh, I've written a bunch of scripts, and I don't even remember which one it was. But we were at my in laws, you know, visiting, and Kat, they were doing shit, or whatever. And I was sitting on the couch with my laptop in my lap, working on this script. And Katie's sister walked by and like looked at, and she was like. She got, I saw her kind of look at me weird, but she didn't say nothing. She yeah. walked off and then she walked back by a little later and I'm still sitting there working on it. And she like looked at me again and she was like, it totally like this incredulousness was totally real. She was like, yeah. are you doing like homework or something? <laughs> she's like, I thought you graduated college. And I was like, no, I'm writing a script. And she's like, what? And I was like, you know, I'm a comedian, right? I, I, you know what scripts are, but like, yeah. they they don't, no, they don't really they don't, they don't know and so it's like there's that element of it too and it did, like you said it's like not looking at it as work they just don't a whole lot of people especially in towns like chickamauga or where my in-laws live or where i'm from they just have no concept well, but that actually of how any of this shit works at all and so they don't that it, also leads to that type of thing it does but it's kind of 50 50 like it sucks when i have to constantly explain like what do you not get about i'm working or this is still work or dude just because i enjoy it doesn't like i'm so sorry that you hate your job like most people do and i know that and that sucks but like i don't but that doesn't mean i don't work any less than you but my point is like them not knowing exactly what it is I do actually works out to my favor a lot because no Amber does, like Amber would never want them to think I was just being a dick because she's got to play politician so she definitely will be like oh Corey's at home working on a script or Corey's at home doing a podcast which again often is true but they hear that and they immediately just like oh I right something he has a different thing going on so whatever and then they move on with their lives and I also have to explain to her like you don't want me and you know me you know me is there any person let that you want less in a situation that doesn't want to be there than me? Because I can't, I, I, I wear my emotions on my sleeve. You know what I'm saying? Like I couldn't fake uh, being happy for a dinner that I hated. I'm not good at it. Okay. All right. In my experience, actually, yeah, you're right. I this is a difficult a question, honestly, because of my radio and stuff. In my experience, that's like a huge role that you play, uh, sort of for me, I, which I, always but hits we're for at, me. We're and, at work. But when, when you, the occasions in which you are not playing ball, yeah, yeah, it really don't hit at all. <laughs> right. like, because you, you literally will just like you'll just shut down and yeah. like won't even speak or anything, yeah. and, I, and I'm just sitting there like. 
fucking nudging you and shit like please talk to this fucking person this ain't him for me or whatever and then you, and you just you just sit there you're just not you're just not gonna do it but those are very rare though. they are very rare but you, the first uh, the first you thing know, I, you're you're you, that's what you that's part of what you do is you're the one that's like what's up let's do it. let's hit i'm a cho cho's here let's hit yeah even when nothing hits <laughs> but think about those two th- I, I can think of two i know by the way the two specific examples you're thinking of I bet one, you do, the, yeah. I, well, <laughs> the the first one is an amalgamation of a lot, which is morning radio, yeah. uh, and at morning radio, I'm really good. But what you have to understand is that is me being professional. I and I can always turn it on for work or when it benefits me. The second I know is when we were riding in a fucking car in Iowa, and yes. I had just gotten off a plane and I wasn't feeling good, and we were in the car with total strangers who were our liaisons to a theater. And they were wanting to have a conversation and you had to bear the brunt of the conversation because I was just like, I don't don't feel good. Fuck (laughs) this. And like, but yeah, because, because I wasn't at work. That was, that was me being driven from a airport to a hotel. I don't like, and and I'm not trying to be a diva. I was like, I was kind of sick and I was just like, I can't, I can't do the other time that I could think of. And like you, it was funny, but it still is an example of the latter thing is the time that you spent this entire second half of an actual business meeting we were in only saying the word butt fuck over and over i didn't know the meeting had started people hear that like that's pretty choey yeah and it is very (laughs) choey yeah didn't hit but the other people you know people in the meeting were like trying to talk about real shit and then joe just butt fuck that's a true story I've Uh, spent this entire podcast not trying to defend myself because I'm an awful person. I get that. But in in my defense, I was really, really high and wasn't aware (laughs) that the meeting had started yet because a lot of people were filtering through. You know what I mean? But, yeah, I mean, dude, not a good look, and I'm ashamed of that. Oh, um, but, yeah, and I want to – because I'm also coming off like a bag of shit here because I'm normally like, yeah, I have you there to talk to people so I don't have to talk to people. That is true, though. Just I know, but just to go into that for a minute, uh, a couple things. First, morning radio – and you've seen this happen with, we didn't, we weren't on the road too much after I had that sinus surgery, Mm -hmm. but I got a lot better about the morning and stuff because like I had an actual like affliction. What? And I said affliction at the same time you said condition. Yeah. Where like, dude, it's six o'clock in the morning. I mean, I'm just like, I was just like, I could barely function legitimately. And dude, being funny is hard. People don't really like, be, or, you know, like being on. And yeah. it was so hard for me to be on at fucking six 30 in the morning, like physiologically. And then after I had that sinus surgery and I was actually, I wasn't fucking not getting any rest ever. Uh, then I started being, uh, you know, I still, it still didn't hit for me to do, but I started being better about morning radio, but that's a whole different thing. This thing about just talking to people, making small talk with people. That is just, uh, it, it has nothing to do with me being like, you know, why, how, how dare this peasant speak in my presence? Yeah. Like it's no, it ain't no kind of like Steve well, Harvey either. or Ellen thing where it's like, tell them they ain't allowed to talk to me or nothing. Yeah. It's nothing like that. I'm actually very fucking socially awkward. Yeah. And like an introvert and stuff. And like, I don't, I'm not good at making small talk with people that I don't know. And I'll like, I feel like I put my foot in my mouth a lot or just say dumb or awkward shit. And it's uncomfortable for me. And that, that's all it is. It's not, um, and if you've met us at meet and greets and thought, I'll oh, try, you were fine. Yeah. It was drunk. I mm-hmm. have to, I have to drink during meet and mm-hmm. greets. That's the only way that I can do that shit. Not cause I don't love y'all. Cause how, I, how I am, I'm just not, I'm not good at that type of thing. Yeah. People don't, a lot of people don't know this, but before you had your surgery, you actually had, you would carry a doctor's note everywhere with you in social situations that said, uh, and you would hand it to people and it would say, uh, don't worry medically. He's a bag of shit and a worthless person. It's not, he's not, he doesn't mean to be as off putting. I think Uh is what it said as he currently is. It's a medical thing that we hope to fix. It was a long note. It was a very long piece of paper, but there's also this fucking thing that's always bothered me about this goddamn world we live in, the society we live in, that Mm -hmm. that was a very real thing, a very real thing. To explain it very briefly, I my 
my whole head and face, all every sinus cavity I had yep. was literally on fire. Yep. Uh, it was inflamed the way that if you get a sinus infection, your shit is inflamed. Mine was inflamed like that every moment of every day for like eight years <laughs> and yep. until I had surgery to fix it. Well, when you have that going on, when you sleep, because remember I took sleep studies and stuff because I was like, something is not right about this. Yeah. But I, it, I wasn't, it, I don't have sleep apnea, which is stunning. I agree, but I don't have sleep apnea. It's that when I was sleeping, my body was constantly fighting that ongoing infection uh, at all times. So I was never getting an Ram adequate sleep. amount of rest. So I would sleep on days off and shit. We we're off the road. I could sleep easily 13 hours every single night, literally. And man, that shit fucking sucks for the record. Like it don't sure. hit being that way. And no, of course got, not. But especially because of how busy your days are, like in this industry and what we do, yeah. like how many things you have to do. Like, like I'm not, and, and please don't think that I'm saying that like, uh, you, oh, it's so tough being us. We've chose this. I fucking love it. I love the industry that I'm in. I love how busy I am. But because of it, if I want to, it, like on a lot of days, if I want to get everything that I'm supposed to get done, then get everything I want to get done and also exercise, eat dinner and hang out with my wife, dude, sometimes I got to get up at like four 30 in the morning, like just to fucking nail all that shit. And if, if you sleep 13 hours, you're like, well, fuck, I got nine hours left in the whole day. Jesus God, I'm fucked. Yeah. So, but then after the surgery that went away, but here's what I was saying that don't hit about society at large. Uh, and, I have this attitude too. I get this to me, or I get this so often still from good friends like you and Drew, uh, often Here this go. world is set on like, it is not okay to just operate on a different schedule than the rest of this world, uh, in terms of sleeping, meaning like some people it's a proven thing. Not everybody, not everybody's sleep cycle works the same way. Right. Not everybody, like a lot of musicians are that way. I remember Patterson Hood telling us, he was like, I don't, I mean, he's like, man, I don't even really get going to like two or 3 p.m. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, you know, Tyler Childers has a line about it. What is it? It's like late in the evening when the sun sinks low, that's about the time my, my rooster crows. crows. That type of shit. Um, but there's a real name for that, which I don't, I can't remember right now, sleep phase disorder or something like that, where right. people, you just, it's just being a night owl. People know what the word night yeah, owl yeah. is. Well, that's a real thing. Some sure. people really are night owls. Like that's how they're wired. They're yeah. wired differently. But that makes you a fucking fat, lazy, well, sorry ass sack of dog shit as far as the rest of the normal people who didn't happen to be fucking born the way you were born are considered because you don't like getting up at fucking six in the morning or whatever. It's like, I hate it. I fucking hate it. it drives me crazy. Yeah, we feel bad yeah, for you. Yeah, because you get up and go for a fucking walk and drink a coffee every goddamn morning at 6 a.m. You're like, I'm a productive member of society and trade a fucking yeah. piece of shit. I've never said that. You say it all the time. You imply I've, it. I've ne no first <laughs> rest of the world says it because first of the way because what the rules are. First off, I've had to <laughs> I've had to train myself. I've just literally rewired my brain during the pandemic. Don't act like I wasn't a bag of shit. That dude, I used to stay up until four o'clock in the morning. You think I was getting up at six? Then I used to never sleep. Not well. That's I know you said never sleep. That's what. But I wasn't would. functional. I mean, I eventually would sleep. Dude, the thing is, though, like, that's, I eventually... so that's how you would go. You would stay up real late, but you get up ass early, too. And you do that for a while. And then after Crash. a certain amount of time of doing that, typically on the day that you first arrived at my house, <laughs> things, you would you would then sleep for 17 hours. Yeah. And then ben, you would do it in just like everything in your life. It was like sleep was a binging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. But I've, like. but, but I've had to rewire my brain. Like now when I get up at six, I, I just, I do fire up and I have a call, but like, dude, because of my anxiety and my depression, I have found that literally the, the thing that helps me the most is to constantly be doing something like just, you know, constant motion or writing or listening to something. So like, I just spring out of bed, get in the shower, drink my coffee, uh, take my CBD, 
uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. And I go for a walk and then I go straight from a walk to riding. So, so like, that's just me. It's more like a manic thing than be, but like, dude, also to defend you, like that the sleep schedule that you have and how your body works is actually optimal for the thing that we did strictly for a living for four and a half years. Yeah. Like, like I mean, that's, that's how, true. that's how you, but like, and that's, and, and like, yeah, I know that me and Drew like give you shit, but obviously we're just kidding. I don't believe none of that stuff, but like, that's kind of always, it's pissed me off to a degree when people are like, you know, comedians, they, they just sleep all fucking day. And I'm like, well, that's first what I'm saying. Off, Everybody, people are like, right. you just sleep all day. And it's like, it's like, dude, that don't mean that it, I'm not fucking productive taking care of my shit or being productive the fact that i sleep later yeah than you. It, so it, many people really do feel that way that's exactly what i'm talking about it, it makes me, me mad crazy. it makes me mad for two reasons number one for simply what you said like do you go up to and say that to any other third shift person like right. do you say do you say that to an emt that works from fucking three to eleven god damn all they do is sleep all day yeah right because they work at two in the morning but also like that's just not the case. Like, yeah, you might sleep all day, but people like you don't just sleep and then get wake up and go get on stage and then go back to sleep. Like there's a lot of shit. Like you're still putting in a full day's work. Yours just starts there. It's like, I've always resented that because like, and, and, and by the way, don't get me wrong. There are comedians who absolutely just sleep all day, get drunk, get fucked up. But here's, here's yeah, the deal. I was about to say, the, here's said, the deal. It's like, you sound like you just do that. And I was like, some, some of us. No, no, some, do that. <laughs> some, some, some do, but do you want to know what they all have in common for the most part? Yeah. Nobody here knows who the fuck they are. Right. Yeah. And I don't mean that as a, that's a dickhead, but that's just for the, for the most part, obviously there are outliers and there are people who it's like, man, they just got it. Like they just got it. They can do that. Reportedly. Like, I don't know that this is true, but reportedly Dave Chappelle was always that type of dude. He wasn't getting drunk all the time or whatever, right. but they always said Dave Chappelle was the type that could just like wake up in the middle of the afternoon, fucking right. just sort of like sit around, smoke weed, think yeah. for a little bit, then just show up at the club, go up there and just murder. And he's different. Um, and right. Yeah. And he's just, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's an just, di he's just different. And, and he's an outlier, honestly, amongst outliers, because I for guarantee sure. you like Jerry Seinfeld, also an, an outlier, but he would look at that and be like, how is this possible? You know, because yeah. Jerry's Cause very Jerry much. Would spend eight hours a day writing, writing jokes and Me stuff yeah. meticulously, meticulously. Right. But I've just, you know, I don't know, I don't know. I've always been that dude, but I've I've changed a lot during the pandemic. And uh, one of the things that helped me change, Trey, you know what it was? It was Lucy Nicotine. Lucy Nicotine is a company founded by Caltech scientists and former smokers looking for a better and cleaner nicotine alternative. Finally tobacco alternatives that do not suck it was researched and developed for three years to be made for people not patients lucy has created a nicotine gum with four milligrams of nicotine that comes in three flavors wintergreen skew cinnamon skew pomegranate i love it that's the one you that's the one you uh chew whenever you're drinking because it don't fuck with your booze lucy also has a lozenge with four milligrams of nicotine and cherry ice flavor each and every flavor they really do taste great it's convenient discreet they can be enjoyed at any time on flights at work on the go, in the gym, uh, as I've said many times on this podcast, but if you're just joining us, I was a huge, huge, huge smoker for years. Um, then I put down the cigarettes three years ago, but I was still vaping like a madman and thought, ah, eh, whatever, this is just how it's going to be. Our good friends at Lucy sent us over a care package. I thought, I'll try it out. I like nicotine. What's, what's better? More nicotine and gum. And the next thing I know, I'm not even vaping anymore. I'm also not using Lucy. So... I guess uh, it's a product that it kind of uh, inherently wants you to uh, quit doing that as well. It's 2020. Get rid of your cigarettes. Unplug your vape. Throw out your dip. Get you some Lucy nicotine gum or lozenges. It's the real deal. A subscription to Lucy comes directly to your door each month. It's so simple. And you don't even have to leave your house because Lucy has delivery down. Well-read listeners, go to lucy.co. Use promo code RED, that's R-E-D, to get 20% off all products, including gum or lozenges. That's lucy.co. Use the promo code RED at checkout. Trey Crowder, hit us with that disclaimer. As always, I am legally required to give the following disclaimer. Warning, this product contains nicotine derived from tobacco. Nicotine is an addictive chemical, <clears throat> which I'll add. Hits. 
lucy.co and be sure to use the promo code red also as i always like to point out <clears throat> i take lucy and i still do i used to and i still do too and, and <laughs> right. it, it stayed it kept it and uh for me all right let's what else also hits not being stressed out all the time or dealing mm-hmm. with pain and soreness you know how you could do that show by using caliper cbd everybody Indeed. at this day and age is aware of the life altering impact of cbd routine and i gotta say i'm right there with them yeah if you're having uh you know, if you want to sleep a little easier you're, or you're dealing with soreness or um, just need to calm down in life and chill out a little, then Caliper CD, CBD is for you. And it's one of, it, it's not an oil. It's a very easily dissolvable powder, which also hits for me. You just put in a little bit of liquid, swirl it around, and there you go. Put it in your tea or whatever the hell you want to do. You don't have to hold it under your tongue, all essential oil style. You know, nothing wrong with that, but I do think this is uh, a little easier and you don't feels like to, the future. It does. Yeah, it doesn't. The the oil, the oil under the tongue thing feels like, I don't know, like doing a thing. Whereas yeah, this is right. just like this is made to accommodate the things you already do. If that exactly. Makes sense. Yeah, it's Caliper. like Star Trek next generation. Like anything powdery and stuff like that. I'm like, I'm a spaceman. Yeah. Caliper CBD is the only clinically proven fast acting CBD. It delivers 30 times more CBD in the first 30 minutes versus oil. You get all the benefits of CBD in just 10 minutes, whereas some oils can take over an hour to fully absorb. It was developed by food science experts with decades of experience, rigorously rigorously tested for purity and quality. Caliper CBD comes in convenient and easy to use packs, precisely 20 milligrams in each packet. You don't have to measure it out yourself. They've done it for you. You can feel it's THC free. So you feel better without the high, no weird taste, no oily residue mixes easily into any food or drink. It's all natural, vegan, non GMO free of fillers, added chemicals and artificial flavors so well red listeners get 20 percent off your first order when you use the promo code well red that's well red at trycaliper.com slash well red you can try caliper cbd risk-free for 30 days if you don't love it they'll give you a full refund completely full refund so that's try caliper c-a-l-i-p-e-r.com slash well red don't forget the promo code well red for 20 percent off your first order and we thank them for sponsoring the podcast now cho won't you tell us about this this hair because you are the one who's uh gotten gotten this so tell us about it i am and i'm so super excited uh, after years of fine print contracts getting ripped off by the big wireless providers if we've learned anything it's that there's always a catch so when i first heard about mint mobile uh and, and how they offer premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month i thought okay What's the catch? But after speaking with them and using their service, it all made sense. There isn't one. I'm Jerry Seinfeld now. There's no catch. (laughs) Where's the catch? I need the catch. Mint Mobile's secret sauce, ooh, they know how to talk to me, is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. By cutting out retail stores, there's no crazy overhead cost that gets passed down to you in the form of mystery fees. Like the, It's like the rust proofing of the mobile world. Instead, Mint just passes on sweet savings direct to you. And I got to tell you, so full disclosure, I still have my old wireless plan. I'll, I'll say that. I still do because I was like, I, you know, like I, I want to do the sponsorship, but uh but I've still got a wireless plan. My family's on there and they're like, well, look, here's the deal. What do you have? A, do you have an, another phone? You could try this service out too and compare them. So I was like, well, yeah. So I got me, I got me a new phone just to have as a sweet burner phone uh, with my, with my mint uh, SIM card in it. And I got to tell you, I live in a part of the world, Trey, you know where I'm from, where it's kind of hard to get service. Mint mm. is just as good as your leading, as your leading cell phone provider. I love it. Also, I don't know if I've told you this, Trey. Uh, I think what I'm going to do, because I have a completely brand new number too. Like I've got my old number, but I got a new number. You know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm just going to give that number out on Twitter so okay. for, my, for my new phone. So it can be like the well-read hotline. I like that idea a lot. There was a service. I don't remember the name of it because we didn't hit hard enough to be invited to fuck with this service. And I don't think it's still around anymore. That was basically what you just described. I yeah. know it from listening to the Two Bears podcast. Yeah, uh, we could uh, we could circle back to this, but where people hitters would have separate phone numbers that anybody could text to or yeah. whatever. Uh, so I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. So for people looking for just extra savings, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. All plans come with unlimited talk and text and high speed data delivered on one of the nation's largest. 
five G -G 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 networks. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. It's so simple. If you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered with their seven day money back guarantee. Switch to Mint Mobile, get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. 15 bucks, you can't beat it. Uh, to get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash wellread. That's mintmobile.com slash wellread. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash well read. I'm telling you, I live in the sticks. It's good service. Take it from me. And yeah, I uh, I don't have the number handy right now. Oh man, I can't remember what it is. But I will next week. I'll say it on the episode. And I'm gonna put it out on Twitter. You can you can call me, text me on this anytime. Obviously, there may be times when I can't answer. But I'm excited to see how this experiment, <laughs> how this yeah, experiment me too. <laughs> it's gonna be something. All right, hits. Um, That's it. You were let's talk about uh hmm. you you were saying on Twitter earlier that somebody had a prompt, what movie traumatized you as a youth? Yes. You a screenshot from Starship Troopers. I'm so glad you recognize that. Oh, well, I recognized it because did it to you too? No. No You were 12, 13 at the time, though. I, I was yeah, I was about to say, I think the minor difference in our ages, yeah, just that couple of years, I think made a world of difference because no, that movie always stuck with me as one of my very favorite and hitting this. I know you're not saying I, it. I love it. I know you're not saying it don't hit, but no, I, I was not traumatized by in fact it <laughs> had a completely opposite effect on me with them uh co ed shower scenes and stuff. I was well, sort of the opposite well, of traumatized. Can by I tell that you movie. something that I but also jacked off part, to it? Yeah, I know. I know you're not saying because it was one, it weren't the other. I'm just saying, uh, I always used to say, I don't know if it's fair to categorize it this way anymore. But I used to say, because I I think it is best it B made, movie ever. I used to I used to always say everybody's like that is the greatest B movie ever made, or that will ever be made, as far as I'm concerned. I do think it is a B movie on purpose. You know, that's what I sort yeah. of recognize about it now. Is it's like it's purposefully like Paul Verhoeven purposefully casted the sort of like B CW movie. level. Yeah cast of the time cw wasn't a thing at the time but you know what i mean by that yeah. right like oh, yeah. the they're they're like very very beautiful and not yeah. the best natural actors or whatever yeah you, you can that. say denise richards out loud yeah right and uh uh old casper casper yeah. van dan or yeah is that his name anyway I think so he did that on purpose like he he made it to to be that way um, but he did it extremely successfully. Paul Verhoeven's a wild motherfucker, actually. Man. Have you, he was like, he was really, really good at that. Ahead of his of time. Like, he was very ahead of his time because a lot of people did, like, the they satire. Didn't get it. About, a lot of people did. I think a lot of people probably still don't. But no, at the time, for sure, a lot of people did not get that movie. That movie's fucking brilliant. I'm actually, I'm actually glad that you're bringing this up because I was actually thinking I was going to mention you earlier. Like, hey, you know what we should do? I don't know if this would be good for a well-read podcast. Maybe we'll do it as just a bonus something. I think we should rewatch that movie and talk about it because one thing, because I ha it's been a couple years since I've seen it, but I do remember like the last time I saw it was as someone who definitely had a more refined palette for movies and was, and was just older and my brain worked better. And I was like, Oh fuck, this movie's really good. And I've gone a step further and I'm glad that you're, I'm so glad that you brought this up. It's so interesting to watch a lot of people, their revisionist reviews of it. It's like some of the same people from 97 that watched it 97 and gave it shit reviews have gone back on what they said and like have admitted they were like this is embarrassing to admit but like i genuinely just didn't get it and now mm -hmm. looking back i don't see how i was that fucking stupid but they were like but you have to understand like that what like idiocracy hadn't come out like that wasn't like s s satirizing to that level and especially like that was, and it was, it's like Poe's law level satirizing. Cause I could totally see how someone would be like, no, I think they just made a shitty movie. You know what I mean? But it's like, no man, a shitty movie that celebrates like the military industrial but, complex, but it doesn't that type of thing. But no, it's ripping. It's, it's satirizing. It's ripping, it. it's ripping, them. ripping it's, on it. it. Well, I think yeah. another thing I think that attributed, attributed to that, although I'm sure a lot of people didn't even know this and they just watched the movie and I still have never read it, but my understanding of is that the book Starship yeah. Troopers by Heinlein. Yeah is kind of like a more 
face value version of right. the thing that he satirized with the movie, which I think also fucked some people up because it right. was an adapted version of a book that kind of was to an extent, the thing that the movie was making fun of. So right. it just went over people's heads. I right. think. Also, right. it's just rad as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, you just, you know, you kind of like, I'm not going to sit here and say I fully got all the satire. I I kept watching that movie throughout my young life. By the time I got to college and was smoking weed and shit, I was telling everybody how brilliant this movie was. Right. But when it came out and I was 13 or whatever, um, I'm not saying that I got it all. I just liked all the titties and the bugs exploding and of all course. that. But it really hits at that part too. That's what it hits at everything. Yeah. And all the like silly shit that it has in it, again, it's on purpose. Right. So it fully plays like the fuck. It's like, my God, they sucked his brains, brains out. out. Yeah. That, all yeah. that. Shit, the only good bug is a dead Head bug. bug. You know all what we should. Over the top shit is on purpose. So it totally plays. That movie's a fucking masterpiece. You, you know what we should do? We should rewatch that movie this week and take some like diligent notes. And then next week on the podcast, do a recap of it but not tell drew that that's what we're gonna do and, <laughs> and just just start just go right into it just be like yeah. all right so this week and he's about what the fuck yeah that is funny we should do that uh, yeah let's... yeah no let's do that okay that'll be fun well, i guess we'll stop talking about it now since we're gonna do that next week for sure when yeah Drew's yeah because that will hit all right well all right well moving on uh i know you you know where i'm going with this because i texted y'all about it but uh you know who I've come to realize recently is an extremely underrated hitter, except maybe not if you are of a certain age. But I think if you're our age and below, people don't recognize the insane degree to which this person hit, and that is uh, Phil Collins. <laughs> oh, yeah, you did text me about this, which, made, fame. which so, made Mark be like, I believe the same thing, but about cake. Yeah. yeah and I was yeah. like, me too, Trish Leche's motherfucker. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so – the reason I thought about this is because as we've talked about on the show before, I've been on my Peloton and it's all like themed playlist for each ride. Include I do a lot of eighties rides hits for me mm -hmm. and Phil Collins kept coming up, but different Phil Collins songs. And it's like when the song first plays, it pops up the title and artist up in the corner. And so every time it would pop up and be like Phil Collins, invisible touch or whatever mm. and i'd be like i ain't never heard this phil collins song and then it would start like oh shit yes i have and it hits oh, it's like a motherfucker uh -huh. <laughs> like, and that happened over and over again and so i finally like looked at i was like god damn how many hits did phil collins have and uh it's a lot he had a whole lot matter of fact how many number one more than every artist of that era except for paul mccartney and michael jackson it goes Paul McCartney, Michael Jackson, and then number three is Phil Collins. Do you think anybody would think no. that? No, never. That's what I'm saying. It's wild. I would have, Phil Collins is wild. That, that is wild because, like, of the other people, like, number – well, first off, fucking Phil, uh, Paul McCartney's got the whole Beatles thing going on. Right. So you get that. And Michael Jackson's got the whole – being, being the, Michael Jackson, being, <laughs> being, the, being the most talented pound for yeah. pound entertainer of the lifetime. What was, what I mean by that is like in their own right, they're sex symbols and like they're people who can sell based on things other than their music. Phil Collins, dude. let's face it, has just got his musical talent. Exactly. And, hey, and that's dude, fucking amazing. You know what? He's a hidden ball. He is a hidden he's ball. A hidden ball. Hidden ball. You need to add him to your list. This is it's funny you were saying that. As you were saying all that in my brain, I was like, I'm gonna have to update the list. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the list of hitting balds because he is, but no, you're right. Dude, he was a drummer. You know what right. I mean? Like drummers don't never get no shine. It was like him never. and Levon, and that's it. Right. Him and Levon and the fucking and Night Dave Ranger Grohl, guy. Yeah, who, Dave Grohl who, and the Night who, Ranger who, you guy. You know, was started doing other shit. Obviously. Right. Yeah, no, that is kind of wild. And like all also on top of that, like. You know, then Phil Collins, Phil Collins scored a Disney movie. You know, yeah. like he got that and whole smashed fucking... with it and like oh, won an Oscar and shit. Absolutely, it, his was "You'll Be in My Heart." That's it, right? Yeah, from Tarzan. Tarzan. Yeah, I, I hadn't seen that one in a minute. We'll have to go back and watch Tarzan without Drew. Um, so let me let me just read some of this here. Uh, 
Collins dis discography includes eight studio albums that have sold 33 and a half million certified units in the U S alone and an estimated 150 million records sold worldwide, making him one of the world's best selling artists. He's one of only three recording artists along with Paul McCartney and Michael Jackson who have sold over hundred million records, both as solo artists and separately as principal members of a band. So that's what that specific statistic was. He's won eight Grammy awards, six brit awards which i guess is the british grammys two golden globes one oscar and a disney legend award he received a star Jesus. on the hollywood walk of fame in 99 inducted in the songwriters hall of fame and in the rock and roll hall of fame in 2003 and 2002 respectively um was it you that was telling me that uh george harrison phil collins story i don't know i don't think so so share it please man i don't want to butcher it but i i'm gonna try to tell it i think so wait a minute i do know this story but i don't think that i told you this and i don't i also have a vague memory of did we hear this at the same time we may have now? and and please bear with me where our listeners because i'm actually gonna do a little i'm gonna do oh, a this little, story hits it hits so hard it's it hits I hard bet we to, listen to the same podcast i bet we did phil collins george george no, I think Mark shared it. Maybe that is what it was. Okay, dude, 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 dude. I'm just going to fucking read this because this is <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, this story's funny. It's so goddamn tremendous. Okay. So... Oh, God damn it, should I just read the whole fucking article? That's a lot. No, no, it's not that much. It's fine. I'll, I'll cite it. This is from Far Out Magazine. I promise you this story is too good for me not to wear this... This is from Far Out Magazine, so I'm just going to read the whole article. George Harrison was undoubtedly a genius songwriter. The things he could do within the confinements of music was a gift, even decades after his sad passing, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but it wasn't just the music that he excelled at. It was also the comic genius that Phil Collins found out about the hard way. Harrison, <laughs> <laughs> Harrison famously even had a sideline career as a producer of comedy films, including, oh, I didn't know this, Monty Python's Life of Brian. George Harrison fucking pr yeah. produced that? I did, I did know that, actually. That's yeah. amazing. He, he also he, like, made basically got that movie made that's and and stuff. fucking amazing well he's my favorite beetle anyways i've been saying that he also made a beloved cameo yeah yeah okay i remember that. however this anecdote courtesy of phil collins provides a perfect glimpse uh into the comedic work workings the seed for his prank on the genesis drummer began in 1970 when collins was a teenage session musician who grew up in absolute awe of everything beatles related the chance to work with harrison was one that he couldn't quite believe even though he was a nervous wreck this opportunity was potentially life-changing when in collins grasped it with both hands at the time collins was in his former band flaming youth and wouldn't audition to join genesis until later on in the same year uh so anyways he says our manager got a call from ringo star chauffeur who said they needed a percussionist and he suggested me so i went down to abbey road and harrison was there and ringo and billy preston and klaus vorman bet that guy was racist and phil specter i'm kidding and and oh he murdered phil specter did he and did. uh and when uh, they started routing the song, Colin stated, Harrison was recording his uh, his debut solo album, All Things Must Pass. This record is the uh, his him breaking free from the Beatles. Uh, Collins continued, no one told me what to play. And every time they started the song, Phil Spector would say, let's hear guitar and drums or let's hear bass and drums. I'm not a conga player, so my hands are starting to bleed. He's playing the fucking bongos. <laughs> and uh, he goes, I'm getting cigarettes off Ringo. I don't even smoke. I was just nervous. Anyways, about after two hours of this, Phil Spector says, okay, congas, you play this time. And I'd had my mic off. <laughs> so everybody laughed, uh, but my hands were shot. And so they all disappear, uh, yada, yada, yada. A few months later, I buy the album from my local record shop, look at the sleeve notes, and I'm not there. And I'm thinking, there must be some mistake. But it's a different version of the song, and I'm not on it, he added. However, that's just the start of this story. Once Collins would become a world-famous star in his own right, he and Harrison were back in contact, which is where this story, this is, God damn it, dude. I, this story is so fucking great. Cut to years later, Collins added, I bought Jackie Stewart's house. Harrison was a friend of Jackie's, and Jackie told me George was remixing All Things Must Pass. He said, you weren't on it, were you? And I said, well, I was there two days later. Uh, he said, well, I was there. Two days later, tapes are delivered from George Harrison with a note saying, could this be you? Suddenly, suddenly the congas come in, too loud and just awful. And the end of the tape, you can hear George Harrison saying, hey, Phil, can we try another without the conga player? 
So now I know they didn't go off to watch TV. They went somewhere and said, get rid of him because I was playing so badly. Then Jackie Ring says, I've got someone here to speak to you and puts George on. And he says, did you get the tape? And I said, I now realize I was fired by a beetle. He said, don't worry. It was a piss take. I got Ray Cooper to play really badly and we dubbed it on. Thought you'd like that. I said, you fucking bastard. Cons then reminisced. In hindsight, it was lovely, wasn't it? So here's the condensed story. That was a lot of rambling because it was a it was a fucking George Harrison to play a prank on Phil Collins. Literally hired a group of studio musicians to come in yeah. and fuck and, this up. And not just, hit. And not hit just so he could at the end go, that was shit, wasn't it? Just yeah. so he could send it to Phil Collins and Phil Collins could feel really bad about himself. Yeah, he brought, yeah, he hired him, brought them all in and made them, made the drummer that he brought in that wasn't Phil Collins fuck it up horribly. I'm just that's also funny to picture, like picture to picture Phil Collins 30, 20 years later or whatever, like, oh. hearing it and listening to that, bo, 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 yeah. just like, just like when, like waiting on himself to come in, yeah. waiting on the young teenage version of himself to come in. And then it's like a fucking baboon slapping fucking Congo, like and just imagining in his head being like, oh my God, how, also, how like embarrassed and mortified he would be in that moment. Also, and none of it was real. Also, in case anybody out there doesn't know how this works, George Harrison, abs this absolutely cost George Harrison a good deal of money to yeah. do. Like, he he hired studio musicians for a whole day's work to come in and do this. Just for It's this also, one I think, important to point out that this is way before. If this happened today, it would be on George Harrison's IG Live. And absolutely. Laughing at it or whatever. He didn't. This was not for like a promo for his no. YouTube channel. Personal joke. This was way for he. No one ever. No one would have ever known about Unless this. Phil, if right. Phil Collins didn't tell the story years later. George Harrison yeah. did it just to hit for himself. <laughs> yeah, this that reminds me of a story. This is the exact same story, actually. It reminds me of a story. One time we were playing uh, football over at it, it's called the Dan McNally Field. It's the ball field named after Dan McNally. We'd go over there and play football. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, don't it. <laughs> And, uh, and uh, don't it though details. And, uh, and, uh, we, we were all there throwing football and then I decided that I need to go to my car for something. And so I have to walk from the field all the way past the concession stand where nobody is. And as I'm getting closer, I just hear this, my buddy, Nathan cook laughing and he had a very distinct laugh. He was going, <laughs> you know, a dipshit. Yeah. And so <laughs> that's like, yeah. So a dipshit old boy. Right. <laughs> and I come around and I look and he is up on his tippy toes and peeing through the cage inside the concession stand, just peeing all inside the concession stand. No one was around at all for him to see this it was just him he is yards and yards away from anybody that would be able to see him doing it and laugh he'd just gone over there and thought this will hit and he was just doing it for himself and i was just like man i mean this is a shitty thing to do but like it's really funny that you did it for the love of the game love like, of the game just, just, just for <laughs> love of the game yeah. <laughs> by the way nathan's not really a i mean he uh, we're he's a sure dipshit he in the way that we're all dipshits but he like, was pissing funny? into a concession stand isn't it funny how all dipshits have that laugh yes that is the official well uh, southern ones for sure maybe <laughs> everywhere i don't know but i can only speak to where we're from but yeah. all the dip yeah <laughs> God, <laughs> i'm about to bleep this so why i mean i just oh his name <laughs> yeah, yeah sure, probably i, I guess i, I don't definitely because I, I love him to death i should have said he's not a dipshit it's just like he's got a dipshit laugh yeah he's a dipshit. Yeah, like a dipshit would yeah uh, <laughs> again i don't know him so you know whatever. you do though you put it on me yeah of course i do i graduated high school with him too uh 80 miles away uh so yeah so yeah phil collins he hits i had more had more top 40 singles than any other artist in the 1980s and i will remind you people was fucking hitting in the 1980s absolutely <laughs> in the music world they yeah was hitting. i mean my god you've got not only you know, Michael Jackson, Paul McCartney, like we said, but you got fucking Def Lep. You got fucking right. Van Halen. You got Guns N' Roses. Appetite for fucking Destruction Motley came Crew. out. Yeah, yeah, right. 
Madonna, for God's fucking sake. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean... It's wild. Yeah, it really is fucking... Like that... And again, like... I think Phil Collins might fall into that Tom Petty category. Yeah, I think that, like... So, as we've definitely talked about it on here before, but as a reminder, the Tom Petty effect that we have coined here at Well Read is basically that when you acknowledge that someone is universally respected and adored but still think that that person is underrated, which is what yeah. we said about Tom Petty when he died. Cause it's like, we know everyone loves Tom Petty. We're aware of that, but Tom Petty isn't talked about the way that like Bowie and Springsteen yeah. and the stones and the Beatles are. And like, he should be, Absolutely. And he is underrated still. Yeah. I kind of think Phil Collins is like, an, another level of underrated because yeah. I don't, I feel like nobody I even think, talks about, I about him. say, I don't think that that first yeah. part about Tom Petty, like everybody yeah. loves him. Everybody knows it. Sure. Yeah. Phil Collins is respected, but actually, but like people don't, I don't think people really know how hard Phil Collins. I is. think Phil Collins is in a level. I think he's of a level that a good deal of people think he's a one hit wonder because Probably. they only are, know. Yeah. Younger people in, for sure. They, they hear it. They're like, yeah, that's the guy that did do, 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 do. Like he's, that's in the air tonight. I mean, that's his biggest, that's his biggest one. But like, that's his biggest hit. And everybody's like, yeah, he's that guy. And then like you said, like he has just slowly permeated the zeitgeist of pop culture. Like you go, oh no, I do know that song. Oh wait, that is him. Oh wow. Holy shit. Like there's probably, there's probably no telling how many fucking movies his songs have been in too. Like how much coin he's making just off licensing that shit. That guy, dude, he's just fucking pissing money. Oh, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's doing fine. (laughs) Like he, he ain't worried about none of this. I'm just saying, you know, no, he is fine. But like, well, he's not, he's, he's fine money wise but he's not fine like you know that he actually just got told a couple years ago like hey you you can't perform anymore no you know this no you doing a bit something right now what are you talking about no i swear to god like he got told by his doctors like he's got some maybe it was a throat thing or something oh no i didn't know this part and oh yeah it was like a couple years ago and they were like you can't perform anymore like it you, it, oh, you, you well, will die sucks. you will die uh but he i just saw something recently where phil collins after not performing for a while was just like yeah i'm gonna do it again so might be about to see uh i don't know i'll tell you what if he dies on stage he'll start getting fucking talked about but yeah, yeah i'm pretty fucking sure hold on just a second let me look this shit up just in case i'm in I'm march doing... of 2020 collins banks and rutherford announced they had infor- they had reformed genesis and were to undertake the last domino tour in november 2020 which of course was rescheduled uh it's right. currently scheduled for september of this year though uh th- to come back on in October of 2020, Collins issued a cease and desist order to Donald Trump's campaign for playing in the air tonight. <laughs> yes. Uh, it says, after a long and prolific career playing the drums, a painful spine injury means that Collins is no longer able to play. According to Collins' own, word, own words in the Daily Mail, my vertebrae have been crushing my spinal cord because of the position I drum in. Don't hit. So he could still, I mean, the he's, guy could still it stand looks like and he's sing. Still gonna, it says that it's going to feature his son, Nick, on the drums. drums and he it can stand like and sing. He's going right. to sing, which he sang all of them anyway, right. but he just can't drum anymore. Which, I mean, that sucks, but, I mean, he can still he can still. It's better than not it. being able to hit at all. Oh, absolutely, it's better than not being able to hit at all. Because uh, be, not being able to hit at all, don't hit. No, don't hit. Not hitting, don't hit. Speaking of which, I'm glad that, uh, like I said, we don't have anything official set in stone, but y'all go to wellreadcomedy.com w e l l r e d comedy.com cuz we should we we think we're about to get the clear to start hitting again uh because Trey it's been a long time since we've it's been hit. a very long time I'm I miss so, hitting so excited to 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 hit again it like because it's like I never planned on no comedian would ever plan on I don't no think no human Re, well true but i'm talking about specifically in the context of comedy i never planned on just full stop restarting this way right right you know and i would i wouldn't have done it on my own but now that it's happened it's you know it's exciting because it is like it's like starting over except yeah. except you're coming to it with years of experience and ability yeah. and stuff so yeah i'm pumped i'm fucking pumped about it 
I'm pumped up too. I was actually just thinking earlier, like of all the little tiny things that I used to bitch about on the road or being a committee. And I'm certain that I will. Yeah. All, learn. Of them, all the things, baby. Me yeah. and you. Oh, commiserating over That's all hate. we did, son. Literally all we did. I mean, don't that hit. and fat and drunk. This don't hit. And yeah. this don't that, hit. None of that fat. hits. Fuck that. This sandwich hits. This, but yeah. None of that hits. <laughs> yeah. Brian Dennehy and this sandwich. Those are the only two things yeah. that hit. But I was thinking, and, 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 and look, look, I'm not, I'm not naive. We will learn to hate again. I know this. <laughs> I know this. But I was thinking about like so many of the things that I miss. And I was like, that's one of the things that I used to hate the most. And I really miss doing that. Like, like little tiny things. Like I was thinking, like, I can't wait for the first sound check just to go and tap on a mic and be like, this good. Fucking good to see you, Steve. Still no leg, huh? And mm -hmm. uh, you know, like I can't wait for that shit. And just all the little things that I think going forward. I've kind of changed the dialogue in my head of like, instead of saying you have to do this, you go, you get to do this. Yeah. You know, like there's going to be a lot of those. And I, and I genuinely think, I mean, you know, who fucking knows how the first couple shows are going to go. I think that here's my prediction. I think that if you're there for the very, very first well-read welcome back show, you're going to be in for one of the greatest shows you've ever seen in your life. I think if you're there for the second one, it could go either way. And I think that's with everybody going back on tour because it's, it's relearning a muscle, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but I'm so excited to do it that I genuinely think that this is going to, once we get everything polished, once we start working on jokes, because we're bringing to it a level of excitement that it subcon that we just subconsciously didn't have for a while, because you just, I mean, not that we never, we stopped loving stand up, but like, this is this has been kind of a kick in the pants, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Like, mm -hmm. dude, you hey, when you get back out there, you know that it can be taken away from you. So fucking live every goddamn set as if it's gonna be your last. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna hit. It is well, gonna hit. And I'm excited. Right. Oh shit, I wasn't recording. Yeah, you were. I know. I was really hoping I could get you. I no, haven't done you that know in a while. What shows up on my screen too, oh, right? that don't hit. <laughs> I forgot you can see now. Ah, uh, well, no, my eyes still don't hit, actually. This just in. Mine don't either. I got to find, you know, I lost my glasses uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, and I just haven't gone to get new glasses. Still can't see. Mm -hmm. I just figured, hell, I don't go nowhere. Yeah. See, Katie, you're sort of on Katie's level, I think. She Thank also, you. like, technically needs glasses. Yeah. Which, but see, like, she'll leave them laying around. She'll be like, where's my glasses? She has no idea. And that right there just lets me know. You it's don't like, need them as much. Yeah. You don't. It's like, I, well, could, I could, I could, I can't even. Yeah. Like, I literally, I think I could be, like, classified as being legally blind. Yeah. Well, it's a spectrum. On, literally. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's a spectrum. I very sure. don't hit. Y'all yeah. just sort of kind of don't hit. Right. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No arguments for me. You hit way less than me. Yeah. I've really been on a tear on this episode, too, and all the ways in which I don't hit. But that's all right. For sure. Uh, oh, I guess we should explain Drew's not here. No, hell. All oh, right. Go. Okay. Well, he'll be back next week uh, when we uh, review Starship Troopers. Yeah. <laughs> so y'all uh, y'all join us. And uh, thank you all for listening to the Well Read Show. We'd love to stick around longer, but we got to go. Tune in next week if you got nothing to do. Thank you. God bless you. Good night and skew. Good night and skew. Bye. That's that's it. I'm, I'm for real. Let's watch Starship Troopers. Yeah, yeah. No, no I like that idea. it's funny. Right. Yeah, it is funny. All right.